Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of That Early Childhood Nerd. I'm Heather Burnt Santi, and Dan Hodgins is here for this episode. Hi there. <laughs> Dan, Dan and I are going to talk about swearing, and I'm primed because <laughs> every time we try to record, um, Dan can't hear me, and it takes a series of experiments. And um, I don't know if he could read my lips, but I was using the F word quite profusely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we thought we were going to have to do it in sign language and there's no <laughs> sign language so um anyway here we go we're ready um i um i love to talk about swearing <laughs> Me too. i love I swearing and talking about swearing we're probably going to upset some people today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so let me just do the quote quickly. And this is from um, Heather Shoemaker's It's Okay Not to Share and Other Renegade Rules for Raising Competent and Compassionate Kids. I, I hadn't read this in a long time. So when we were talking about recording about this topic, I went back and re-looked at it. And there's some stuff that I, it's not the way I would do it in this chapter, um, but also some good stuff. But but what we're gonna use as our starting point is, um, so Heather Shoemaker says, Stephanie Rottmeyer, a director at the School for Young Children, says bad words are mostly a big deal for adults, not kids. Young kids lose interest if adults don't reward cursing with a strong reaction. Sometimes it's just fine for a group of kids to get together and say bad words. They aren't hurting anybody. They're laughing and having fun together, she says. But it's important to give kids information so they understand who feels uncomfortable hearing those words and what times and places are considered socially inappropriate for saying them. Um, so that's a good starting point. Um, that's probably I, true. I think it probably upset adults more than just. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of why I chose it. Um, uh, I don't, I don't know that I've seen a child who swore and then was upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> or bo or bothered or disturbed if they had done that um and i sort of like the idea of just sort of stumbling upon a group of kids <laughs> who are swearing and practicing out new words with each other um but let me ask you because this is one when, when i record with you i generally ask for a topic rather than coming to you with a specific topic already decided so why why was this the one that came to mind for you well it came on fast Facebook, it was a question that somebody asked. Uh -huh. And then it was generally a response of what strategies to use mm -hmm. uh, to prevent swearing. And mm -hmm. so, of course, I got upset, uh, <laughs> started to swear. And, <laughs> and, and said to myself, because they started calling it, the adults started calling it potty talk. And I thought, yeah. you know, I'm not, I don't sit in the toilet and swear a great deal. I, <laughs> right. But that's that a strategy all? that I hear all the time yeah. is if you want to say that, you can go into the bathroom. If you want yeah. to say that word, you can go into the bathroom. And I um, I understand why if you think of it as potty talk, that seems like a good strategy to try. Um, uh, but, and I want to let you unpack in a minute why you don't like calling it potty talk. Um, but it's, it's that strategy, like so many other things we do with quote unquote misbehavior is really just making the adult feel like they've done something. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's not, even if you think it's a behavior that needs to be changed or that you think is, is wrong, that doesn't teach them anything they would need to do to do it differently. True. Um, if that's True. what you're asking of them. But so, so talk about why potty talk specifically made you. Well, if we, we spend so much time in the U.S. getting children, quote, potty trained, mm -hmm. uh, and now we're using swearing as a place to do it mm -hmm. uh, because it, quote, is a bad thing, um, do we really want the potty room used as that place yeah. um, uh, to do bad things? Yeah, so uh -huh. I hadn't thought about that if we've just spent you know, a good chunk of the first two, three years of their lives, sure. talk, praising them for going into the potty and trying to get them into the bathroom. And, and suddenly that's where we send them when they swore, maybe the message they're getting is this is cool. Yeah, <laughs> Swearing yeah, is good exactly. because, because the bathroom has been very important to you adults right. for all these years. Yeah. And now you want me to go in there to use these words. All right. You know, plus the fact <laughs> We're saying to children, it's okay to use that language. Just don't use it in front of me. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's a double, and I'm not suggesting that's right or wrong. I'm suggesting that it indicates to people that the own children, that the only reason they should go into the party would be to use quote, <laughs> swearing language yeah. uh, and be in so that I don't hear it. Uh-huh. So if you were opposed to swearing to begin with, then be opposed to swearing. <laughs> That's Don't true. Make yeah. Hot yeah. For it to occur. Not that I think you should be opposed to swearing, but that's the message that I think is given by a lot of sure. adults. By sure. Snake, if if you think it's wrong, it's wrong. Exactly. Regardless of where exactly. you're going to go do right. it, you wouldn't say if you're going to bite your friends, go do it in right. the bathroom. Exactly. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Yes. For many so reasons. That message alone to me um, is, is certainly not appropriate, but yeah. it's really not why I want to talk about swearing. Yeah, okay. What I want to talk about swearing is, and this is going to really upset some of the preschool programs, but but da da, like I've got <laughs> Yeah, shocking, before. Dan. Shocking. <laughs> I think that we accept children who speak Chinese, French, English. Um, all kinds of languages. And yet, when a child uses swearing, uh, we might expel that child because the first reason for a child to be expelled, according to the survey, is hitting. The second Uh is swearing. And I'm thinking it's really high in the list of expulsion. Mm -hmm. So I think that essentially what we're saying is that uh, swearing is bad. And I want to know who develops the criteria Mm -hmm. of what is good and bad. If a family uses that language, are we then going to say to that family that that's not right? That is a bad thing. That's fascinating. So so you're making a case that swearing is just an evidence of linguistic diversity. (laughs) And I'm suggesting that it's discrimination. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. So if you're going to enroll a family then the policy right at the beginning should be, we expel children, <laughs> we punish children, uh-huh. swear. Because yeah. I think that people should know that right up front right. in terms of the process. So, And I, I used to say to teachers um, when we were talking about this, that there were really two kinds of swearing kids. And one was, you know, maybe the one who liked the big reaction and thought it was, you know, sort of funny or the one who just would use it to test out their sense of humor or power. And the other was the one who that was just the language that they've learned growing up because you you learn language by being among speakers of language. Yes. Um, yes. And and so there's nothing right or wrong about that for that child. That's that's what they've that's the language that's used in the home. Yeah. And that sort of sounds like what, what you're talking about. And, you know, and I'm, I'm under the spell of my mother who was Southern Baptist uh-huh. and there was no swearing whatsoever allowed in our home. Yeah. So for me to make that flip, uh, which took a long time yeah. to suggest that anyone who swears wasn't going to hell yeah. or someplace evil yeah. uh, was a real flip for me. Yeah. Uh, but as I observe children, and like you indicated, that often swearing is done for, uh, oh, I've got an audience who seems to like this or not, um, or the fact that uh, the family might use words that other people don't like, um, and yet um, it's acceptable for that family. Yeah. And if my role is to accept every family that you know, comes to my door on Monday, mm-hmm. I have to accept families that swear yeah yeah and that you'll hear it communication yeah yeah so it's um so we could be counting those as vocabulary words that they know (laughs) (laughs) by the way i think that some children uh use three words in a complete sentence when they say you are my motherfucker or whatever (laughs) i mean that's four words Uh, well they probably motherfucker would be counted as one in that in that word in that word sample yes yeah with a dash um yeah so i didn't i didn't swear for most of my adult life um because i was southern baptist yeah um and so i sort of started to gradually let myself think about it differently um, and I, so I would maybe say bitch and my friends would giggle. Um, they thought that was so funny. And then, um, when I started to be just really pretty free about it, I still didn't really like fuck, 
but um notice how our tone lowers changed yeah even now i'm like ooh. um but i i but so there was a long time this is no, nothing but for me to just tell the story there was like a year when my son would try to specifically engineer situations that would sort of maybe surprise me into saying fuck and that was like his project and then once that that dam was broken i just like this is a great word it, right. it's wonderful and it's yes. funny and um <laughs> And, yes. I, and it feels good, um, all that kind of stuff. So, so, um, so I've been through sort of that progression yes. myself as yeah. as a grown up, thinking differently about it. Um, and you know, you had to evaluate it. And I started to look at this, thinking, what bothers me most about words in in general, uh -huh. um, and then decided that. Um, I couldn't figure it out other than the fact that I was taught that there were words, there were certain words that were bad mm -hmm. and certain words that were good. And then I started to evaluate, wait a minute, that was my mother who made the decision <laughs> about what's right or wrong. Yeah, yeah. And I carried them on essentially. Yeah. Um, and then I began to think, well, I don't know if I have the right any longer to say what words are right or what words are wrong mm -hmm. in terms of that process. There are certain words that I don't use. They're not necessarily swearing. Uh -huh. I would classify them as swearing, but they're words of what I would call disrespect. And I think that category is different. I might handle it differently yeah. than I would a swear word. Does that make sense at all? Yeah, and but it, and but that's but that's not about the word. It's about the the intention behind the word yes. it's not the yes. the four letters that they used or whatever and that used to really confuse me like I would I would sit and I would think who who in the world just decided these arbitrary words are going to be um considered immoral and and put your soul in danger right. um right. and 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 who does you know where did that come from when it comes from our puritanical <laughs> roots right yes. um it's all um either sex or body parts right. or um that that a lot of our swearing comes from so that was um just sort of an evolution in my thinking about it but um it's it's you know it's us that give them power or to, or you know allow them to just be a regular word and we we have that in our control right right you know in children <clears throat> what what i've seen is an evolution in the use of words too especially swearing because it mm -hmm. used to be you poopy butt yeah uh, and at that point people were even upset with that, that absolutely still yes and, and then i think it got to a point where you poopy butt no longer had status <laughs> So children had to find words I to amp up their defense. game. Right. <laughs> they up the game. And that's when fuck and other words like that became yeah. um, more prevalent because it now um, using the quote F word now gets a great deal of attention uh, from a lot of people. Matter of yeah. fact, it's frequently right. uh, brought up in, in Facebook different scenarios in terms of what to do with yeah. that child who is now using it frequently. And I'm thinking, well, that should tell you alone yeah. why the child is using Exactly. <laughs> so my um, my ex-husband and I used to joke a lot because um, he worked in childcare for a little bit too. And um, there would always be like every, every year, every few months, there would always be some parent who was upset that their preschool child was swearing. And they would come in and talk to the director about the school age kids. Like, oh, it's the school age kids that are teaching my kid to swear when we had heard them in the parking lot <laughs> using the very language. Right. Um, so, so even, even now, sometimes when I, you know, I hear a, a young child swear, my brain is like, oh, those darn school age kids right. did it again. <laughs> yeah. You know, and the other thing too, is the fact that we talked about this in other sessions in terms of what children do to attain power. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, um, the use of swearing in, in most cases um, will provide that opportunity for power when you call someone else or say it and they're upset mm -hmm. by it. 
that makes the person who said it feel pretty powerful mm -hmm. in terms of, so just like hitting and other components that sometimes children use for power, I think that language um, is, is another one of those um, aspects that is, is commonly used. Yeah. So, so is what I'm hearing you say, Dan, that we, sh we should just let it, let it fly. Like we don't need to respond to it. Right. I think when we hear it, even if we didn't like swearing and thought that developmentally it wasn't appropriate, uh -huh. even if I thought that, then the practice would have to be in most cases ignoring it. Right. Because giving attention to it would only add power to it. Yeah. And so if you didn't want it, you don't want to add power. You don't want to be an audience, mm -hmm. um, you know, reinforcing the idea of, of using swearing. So if I thought it was not appropriate, then ignoring to me is the first choice. The second choice is give them a word that you want them to use that makes some sense. You don't say, oh, did you mean a, a flower? You know, when the child is saying, fuck, mm -hmm. no, it has the same letter, <laughs> the beginning letter, but it's not what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So I think making statement you're angry with him right now is an yeah. okay thing uh, to say, which is in condemnation. Right. And I think that's the problem is when we make a judgment uh, in terms of what a child is saying, then I think that moves over to the a negative aspect of guidance. Yeah, yeah. I think that a lot of parent blaming and, and then us versus them feelings come up during, around swearing conversations too, that we, we immediately say or think, well, that's just bad parenting to use those yeah. words around, yes. around the children. And I don't think that that's necessarily helpful or, or real. <laughs> like, I know lots of very good parents who, who have um, a colorful vocabulary sure in that sure. way but but i wonder too then if we're saying to a child who has learned the language naturally because that's the language that's used at home um and then we say um oh that's that's wrong you shouldn't use that word that's that's a bad word what are we doing to that child for that child's relationship with their family or with or our relationship together if we are setting up that um, uh, you know, oh, those people that are important to you. Well, that's, um, that's really wrong of them. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, do I, it. And, and I wouldn't carry that to every situation because sure. of course there are things that, that parents might do that, that would be harmful for, for children. But I don't think that swearing is one of them. I don't think we need to have that, that reaction or take a chance of disrupting relationships because of, um, you know, a three-year-old's word choices. Sure. And I think that's an important point in terms of developing relationships with the family that because we're not just dealing with the child, we're, yeah. you, we're dealing with the family. And, and what message are we sending about the child's family? Um, and, and if my mom says that word or my dad said, or any uh, adult in the family situation makes that word, does that make that person bad? Because mm -hmm. that's what we've done is we've associated swearing with badness, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, and so we don't want relationships built in families around the idea that, well, then my family must be bad. Yeah. Because the person I'm with a lot and like um, <laughs> uses bad. Yeah, right. And they do it right out in the living room. They don't go to the bathroom to do it at all. Right, right. What's going on here? Yeah. yeah. But I, I would I, say that besides ignoring and maybe giving, one of the things that we probably need to do, it, it might be to talk with adults, not children, mm -hmm. about um, what they consider to be good language mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily conversation about what they consider to be bad language, but uh, are there language, um, are there words that are being used that um, um, you find really um, effective mm -hmm. uh, or the child uses it that's really effective. I think those are okay conversations mm -hmm. as long as again, they're not conversations about making judgments. Yeah. In terms of that process. Yeah, it should be like 
it should be like everything else should be like when we're working with with kids um, is to look for the reason something's happening. So, you know, they're, um, uh, so any behavior conversation, certainly what's the reason this is going on and that's what we should address. But I mean, even, um, this is the example I always use, you know, a child who, who hasn't had a lot of practice with puzzles and doesn't get the pieces in right away, first time, every time, and kind of struggles with that. Then we look at, well, is this something we really need to figure out with them or are they okay not knowing it yet? Or is this something that is frustrating to them? Well, maybe they do want my help a little bit and I'll right. think about, well, how do you help a child figure out puzzles? Right. Um, and, and it should be the same thing. It, it doesn't have to be a big Facebook conversation um, where you're desperate and seeking help from your colleagues um, to solve this swearing problem um, yes. because the problem is sort of in our heads, not Right, right. I, I, and I'm not targeting a particular population, but I think your faith-based programs yeah. um, might have some challenges with this. Yeah, topic. yeah. And especially uh, if you're housed in a church, that sure. would be tricky for you, definitely. Sure. In that case, rather than looking at it again as being a judgment of what is good or bad, uh, but taking a look at what practices would prevent it. Mm. Um, or um, not add to it. And I think the ones we suggested, um, you know, ignoring and giving the actual words that you might want to substitute those kinds of things and not sending them uh, to the yeah. bathroom or the potty yeah. uh, would be practices that they could use ahead of time. Because just because they belong to a, a particular faith does not mean that the child is not going to use yeah. uh, swearing um, yeah. in terms of that process. Yeah, I think if you're, if you really feel strongly about it and you're listening to, uh, you know, someone out there is listening to us and not agreeing with us um, and really still wanted a strategy, I have definitely- what? not agreeing with I us? I know, well, it's a chance, there's a chance. <laughs> okay. I'm not right. saying it's true. Um, there's a lot of lot of different folks out there, so right. you might not agree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, where was I even going with that? Oh, just like, just with, within myself, I would, if there was, you know, I was walking around the classroom or the, when I was doing it in my home, um, I would just myself use funny words when I was frustrated or, yes. you know, so, so it was just part of the language they were hearing when they were around me. And then maybe they, that's what they started to use too, because we do sort of turn into the people we spend the most time with regardless of our age. Um, so, so if it was something that really was causing distress um, without condemnation, you could just start saying, well, I'll model right. some different words and um, some words that sound funny to kids, they'll pick up on and notice. And, and so there, you can do things like that, but I just, I just don't think we need to get as stressed out about it. Right. As right. we do. Right. We certainly don't need it to be the second highest reason for expulsions. Yes. Because um, yes. well, we, should, we, we shouldn't be expelling. But, um, you know, what you're doing there is you're trading your adult comfort for, well, because of your adult comfort or discomfort, you're, you're engaging in a practice expulsion, which there is a pile of research about the negative effects that will have on a child. So if you're concerned, if you're concerned about that child's soul because of the words they use, but you're not concerned about the life that's going to be impacted right. by the choice you make to right. expel right. a child for swearing, I think there's some real reflection to be yes. done there. Yeah. yeah. You know, one of the subjects that I talk about with parents frequently is the subject on, um, uh, bodily functions because yeah. it is the most important thing for children to talk about. Um, it has been important part for us to talk about with them. For a, we're still yeah. talking yeah. about it. <laughs> you know, and so sometimes children will use words um, that they hear again from the adult 
um, that reflect a particular body part. Yeah. And then they're condemned uh, for using um, that. Yeah. Um, you know, I keep thinking we don't have any slang words for knee, but we certainly <laughs> have a lot for penis and vagina. Yes, we do. <laughs> but again, that's because of our adult discomfort exactly. with the idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was telling my, um, uh, my just, sweet, wonderful mother-in-law um, about this little girl that we had in the preschool and she was working on V sounds. That was one of her speech uh, targets because um, it was a speech lab or speech hearing clinic, speech language clinic. Anyway, she was working on making that V sound. And so they would just do like little, very short drills with her where they would just repeat the same V word over and over. And they were, her family was taking a trip to Chicago, which is about uh, two hours from here. So a longish van ride for a five-year-old. And she, her mom said she was back in her car seat, um, just repeating V words to herself, like vase and, um, <laughs> you know, whatever. And then she started with vagina and then she went vulva. <laughs> and it was just repeating them over and over. And I was telling the story and, and my mother-in-law was like, but where did she even hear those words? you know it was such a shock and and Steve said well that's what we do now we we use real you know the real body part names and but yeah you could just she wanted to laugh at the story but she was <laughs> oh yeah and and in some cases that is considered potty talk yes yeah when they actually use the or real, someone like, would freak out that there was sex abuse happen sex exactly, abuse right, happening right. Yeah. Thinking, yeah. you know you like that better than pee pee <laughs> I think it's not a man in the world that wants a pee pee. <laughs> At least I hope not. Yeah. Yeah. In our family, it was Tallywhacker. Right. <laughs> when I was grown up. Yeah. So I'm wondering, you know, where, and, and again, I understand where some of that came from. Yeah. Because, you, you know, we grew up in a period of time where certain, it's interesting because I was in the 70s and and I think that's when the language became a little looser oh. in terms of the, um, the process. Uh -huh. But then we went back into the 80s and got a little more conservative in yeah. terms of our approach. And, and, and that all gets lumped together in this idea yeah. of potty yes. talk and bad language or inappropriate language. Um, we had a little three and a half year old girl named Samantha. She was one of those children that everybody took a quick look at her face and said, what an adorable, beautiful princess kind of thing. <laughs> and the first uh -huh. phrase that she learned was son of a bitch. Yeah, of course. One that walked into the it's classroom. got good rhythm. I, it's got like good rhythm. The first thing she would yell out, hey, you son of a bitch. And that was her name calling and recognition uh -huh. of the person. Of who greeting, was yes. Right. Uh -huh. so yeah. Every time an adult would come in, I would say, you are probably going to be called son of a bitch and here's what you might say. Uh, that's say, great. oh, my name is, and how uh -huh. are you, Samantha? Uh -huh. Well, the minister of the church, because we were in a church building, walked in, he was new and he was doing oh, his boy. presentation. Yeah. He walked in and of course, that's the first thing that Samantha yelled yes. out. Hey, you son of a bitch. And yeah. he looked at me and I said, it's what she thinks you are today. <laughs> <laughs> it's a standard greeting. It oh, doesn't mean you. anything That's special. <laughs> tell her what your name is. And he said, well, aren't we going to correct that? Be? I said, please tell just, her. What just tell her your name. And that <laughs> will quote yeah. unquote correct the behavior. Yeah. But he didn't. He yeah. commented that might not be the best thing to say, young lady. So oh. she called him a son of a bitch. <laughs> Let me try it again. What? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah, I used. I mean, like I, Oh my God. I I used to not you know be a swearer and not and yeah. be really worried about using body part appropriate language. Um, when when Curtis was four, he um. Well, we had this book called "I Wonder Why I Blink" and other questions about my body, okay. and there was a two page spread about. Uh, the reproductive process yes. and I didn't want him to see the word vagina or I didn't want anyone to read him that page before I had a chance to do it so I taped them together <laughs> but then he learned to read on his own and I forgot that and he like pulled because he knew there was something in there 
Right. So he pulled it apart and he came out like waving the book at me very <laughs> accusatorily. And he was like, so oh. I know that when I was born, you pushed me out a small hole between your legs called your varagina. <laughs> <laughs> and then just walked oh, out again. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess oh. I lose that one. <laughs> perfect yeah perfect. yeah <laughs> yeah well so. you little shit it's not varagina it's a right. vagina <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah i i i really wonder that people need to reflect again and and why they get upset about a number of things yeah uh, yeah <laughs> wearing this probably one of those things that we need to say what bothers us most about mm -hmm. this yeah and how do i get over it yes I'm exactly doubt, how do i uh, get over it rather than focusing on causing the child to yeah. uh, to change in yeah. terms of that i think, think like, like, it, like of all the things that children could do that would not be in the top right? of my list no you know? um Fighting and, would be. Right. Uh, <laughs> not that it's necessarily evil, but it certainly can't it's something be something that, yeah, that, that requires <laughs> some sort of, of response and, and right. thinking through. Yeah, I we, we add so much stress to our own already stressful days um, yes. by trying to, to manage children um, instead of understanding them yes. and letting them <laughs> be yes. children. Yes. Yes. And um you know, I think like, like a lot of, um, I'll say it again, like a lot of behavior stuff. Um, it's the idea of explaining it, having to explain it to an outsider, or what if someone sees me just allowing this? Um, or what if another parent complains because that kid went home and told his mom what this kid said? And um, so, so just your idea of sort of preparing a, other adults for that kind of thing, I think is really a smart thing to think through and think about doing, um, whether it's your director who might come in or another family or the right. pastor. <laughs> yeah. And just, and I think even having a parent meeting or family mm -hmm. meet gathering to have a discussion about yeah. um, words that your child might bring home. Yeah. Um, that's not something that you're comfortable with. I think those are healthy um, conversations and should be done right at the beginning. Yeah um of the school year you know we just send home letters saying you know kids are going to learn the alphabet and their numbers how about swearing <laughs> so just, I mean, just trick them by saying right um your child might be exposed to some ling linguistic diversity right here that you weren't planning on no. yeah no yeah just being open and calm about it yourself in those contexts um will help take one element of the pressure Right. off I think and I think again it's related back to the earlier conversation if if a child is doing it for a sense of power you yeah. really need to watch how you respond uh, to something because remember you're the audience now mm -hmm. and <laughs> essentially yeah. how you respond is whether or not the act the performance the power is yeah. going to continue uh, yeah. frequently um, and I'll tell you I I had a difficult time at the beginning <laughs> and when I first heard, you know, fuck, I'm thinking, oh my God, <laughs> where did you get that word? And I'm thinking, we weren't doing that word till oh, F week. <laughs> <that's like laughs> you know, and I, so I had, I had to yeah. reflect myself Definitely. in terms of that uh, process. Mm -hmm. um, and I think those kinds of conversations, like you indicated, and like Heather had in her book, uh, Heather Shoemaker is, is that, you know, I think adults get more upset than those are the people we probably need to be talking. Yes, sure. About. They're the ones that, you know, are getting upset about it. Yeah. And I want to jump back to power. Yeah. I guess we weren't really out of power yet, but um, just to, to, to build on that, I, I think then part of our conversation with ourselves needs to be well, what do we, how, what are our feelings about children having power in our space? Like they, I think they deserve to have power. I think it would really suck to go through life having, you know, every decision all day long made for you. Right. And, you know, it, it's, it's not something that you're just going to say, well, we'll give them a choice of cup color at snack um, or 
um, will give them classroom jobs and give them that feeling of power over something. It's not the same. It's, it's. Yeah. Um, and to think Heather, that if we don't give children power, how often they will have to try to attain- To get it. Get, yeah. To get it. And how long that's gonna take in mm -hmm. some cases. So the more opportunities I think that children are allowed to have that, what you classify as a real choice of power, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, the easier it gets in terms of even guidance, because everybody wants to talk about guidance. And yes, I'm thinking, they do. You know, if you, if you give children opportunities for power, those issues that you want to talk about in terms of guidance and discipline often diminishes rapidly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and yeah. I'm not suggesting that swearing is going to be gone. I'm, I'm <laughs> suggesting that it might be used differently or not yeah. as often. Yeah. Or the one yeah. kid that you're thinking about kicking out for it. Exactly. You might see a difference. Yes. Um, yes. And like anything else, it's going to, you know, it's not going to be overnight, but you might notice he only does it twice now a day, a day instead of yeah. five times And the a day. sad thing is, is that it's mostly boys. Yeah. It's, yeah. you know, there are five out of seven expulsions are, you know, boys. Right. And uh, boys of color. Most are boys black, color, and, Lati right. you know, black yeah. and Latino. And, and, um, and I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> we should be looking uh -huh. at this for a number of reasons, not just right. swearing, but a number yeah. of reasons. It should yeah. be. Yeah. Sounds like another. Expulsions, uh, a whole other <laughs> episode. I'm writing it down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I'm not saying that there's some sort of correlation between kids who swear and the color of their skin. I just, oh, whenever no. we're talking about expulsion, I feel like that needs to be part of the conversation. Because, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's a troubling reality. Right. Um, and, you know, we all there's a lot of, of damage that can be done. Sure. Sure. For a child and their family. Yeah. When, when we do that. Um, oh, yeah. I lost it. Sorry. It's gone. You know, I'm, I'm, there's another component to this that I am still dealing with in terms uh -huh. of an adult, and that's using the N word. And I can't yeah. even say it, but yeah. words like that um, to me are, are disrespectful if we use it as adults. Yes. Um, with children who use it, is, you know, to, to suggest that they don't hear and recognize what's in their surrounding environments um, when they're young is not yeah. true. I mean, two year olds right. begin to uh, practice yes. uh, what they see and hear. So, again, uh, we're at least we're not saying that everything um, doesn't matter. Right. In the approach, but even when a child uses um, something like the N word yeah. um, to another child, how we approach that um, has to be in a calm, uh, reflective, and taking a look at why a child would, would use that mm -hmm. uh, word and where that came from, mm -hmm. to me, is more valuable than condemning a child for making that statement. Yeah. And I, I think with, with swearing, some things, something that I, I hear um, adults say is well that that hurts other people and I don't think that that's an authentic real you know real response but in the choice in the case of um you know racial slurs sure. then yeah, yeah that word can hurt other people yes. and so I yeah. um I I need to disrupt that bias and, you know right. disrupt that right. that right. moment of right. bias for both the child who used it and everyone who's hearing it and it's different oh, right than yeah. um than what we're saying i think about about swearing in general right i'm glad you said that because right and i and i want you know i want to make sure that we pointed out that there is a difference in how we approach it mm -hmm. um might be similar but but different in terms of um uh, who is receiving that mm -hmm. word mm -hmm. and how they respond to that word um versus using a word just to attain a sense of power yeah recognition yeah um fortunately i have not had a lot of experience with that specific kind of situation but i know that there are folks who have yes um and i imagine that uh the the grown-up uh limbic system goes a little nuts <laughs> 
in those moments. So we have to regulate ourselves, I think, exactly. a yeah. little bit before we can we can swoop in and decide what we we're going to do. can't necessarily assume that the child is being a racist. No, no, but, but I think that's why you want to say yeah. you want to you want to draw attention to it right. early yeah. for all of them. It's it's um, and it's certainly not potty talk. No, <laughs> no, goodness it's, sakes. Yeah, yeah. Yikes. Yeah, that's that might be a nice, healthy discussion sometime about, you know, what to do with those words of what I call disrespect. Yeah. Uh, versus words that are used for power recognition mm -hmm. and, and, and swearing. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think you can't. It's, it's not helpful to assume disrespect with any of them, but, right. but it's more likely that those sort of racial um, or homophobic yes. slurs that you, that you might hear a child use, um, whether, whether they intend it that way, we still need to step in as if that's what's going to happen. Right. Um, but like I had, I used to work in a, um, youth program and it was school agers and teenagers and lots of swearing <laughs> and we didn't you know we had 80 kids in the building at night so we couldn't stop it all you know we, there was just right. even if we wanted to there's nothing we could do but I was being um sort of chastised by a supervisor um who was also a friend um that I'd known a long time and um I said well why why do you think I need to stop it like what is it really hurting um because the whole intent was to give kids a safe place to be instead of out, you know, on the streets or, sure. Sure. um, and to build relationships with them. And, and she said, well, it's disrespectful. And I was like, wait, in all contexts, swearing is disrespectful. She's like, yeah. So, so, so when you call wow. me a bitch playfully, you're really disrespecting me. Cause I need to know that <laughs> she was like, okay, no, it's not always disrespectful. <laughs> Yeah. In some like, cases, right. it could be a compliment. Right, exactly. <laughs> yes, it's a token of my love for you. Right. Um, when I when I use that language, so so just the idea of it always being disrespectful right. Right. is um, yeah. another thing that we need to to consider. Well, and here. I was referring more to what when adults use it, whether yes. or not it is used in terms, not with with children. Yeah, in terms using it to each it. other. Gotcha. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Oh gosh, what else? Is there anything else? I Heather, I think that we covered. We I think we did a lot. I mean, it, probably because it really doesn't bother us that <laughs> right. much. I'm sure it probably bothers. Right, uh, this may feel uh, longer for the listener. Right. <laughs> it's it's interesting so because the list on Facebook of what to do with children uh -huh. who swear was extremely long, uh -huh. and most of it was focusing on. Um, again, what the child did that was wrong, uh -huh. rather than well, how do we move in a direction of if this bothers you, how are you going to practice not letting this bother? Yeah, no one brought that up. Really, and that's what made me upset. Yeah, yeah, no one was like, wait, let's think about our own reactions. Exactly. To, to it. Yeah. 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 yeah, well, I feel like that's for for people who feel like their job is to correct children and fix deficits. Um, it's it's unusual. It takes practice and sometimes explicit open invitations <laughs> to think in that way and to right. shift and say, well, maybe maybe there's something I'm needing to think through. Um, I had a child one time. I had a storybook, and the child said, "Shit, I've already read that book," <laughs> and the student that was with me at that point just had this look of, and I said, oh, you want a different book? I didn't <laughs> yeah, even focus. Right. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> yeah. at first I didn't even pay it. I mean, I, I didn't even notice that the word shit was used. Uh -huh. But then when she brought it up afterwards at a meeting, I'm thinking, okay, you're going to have to work on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, because the child was being honest. Right. Um, oh, you probably read had, this several times. Clearly communicated. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a goal. That's a language goal. Yeah. 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 And I think that's what I meant at the very beginning of this is, is it's really part of 
language and we have to look at it as form of use of words mm -hmm. uh, and everybody uses different words mm -hmm. yeah. that class. and one is not better than the other yeah. they're just different in terms of that and if we can come up with that kind of framework yeah. and not be as upset I think yeah and one of the things I learned from working with speech language pathologists over the last three years was that you know if a child has a speech sound error or makes grammatical mistakes it's not it's not helpful or useful to stop make them say it again say it the right way make them repeat you um do anything sort of punitive in that moment but to just say it the way you'd like it to be said over and over gives them the input that they need <clears throat> to you know to make that next step of language development so i think that that could carry over into swearing too definitely definitely i, I see that as a you know real positive strategy yeah. uh, to use because we wouldn't do that with adults we wouldn't go up to an adult and say didn't you mean and repeat that three times kind of thing <laughs> right. we wouldn't do that yeah <laughs> um so i think the same practice can be used with children yeah 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 all right. I think we we uh, we did good work here today, Dan. <laughs> always. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it always does feel that way um, when we talk. Um, but I, I, you know, honestly, I hope if people take issue with anything we were saying here, that they that they comment that or send that out so that we can keep conversations going. Um, and I, I will just pause and breathe before I write a response. <laughs> I will, I will and swear uh, a little and swear a little yeah. to myself because <laughs> right. that, that is sort of how I regulate myself right. and get myself back into a good mood. Right. There is a catharsis right. um, and, and a, a good feeling for me about swearing. So, um, okay. Well, thanks, Dan. Thank you. It's always right. a pleasure. Thanks everyone for listening and come back again for another episode of That Early Childhood Nerd. <laughs>